Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea. Welcome back to a high-level best of three today from the GSL. Between in the bottom left, spawning as our blue brother player playing for Team Twisted Minds. It is classic. And in the top right, as our red Zerg player playing for Talon Esports. It's of course a Dark. The man who has announced that at some point he's going to need to go to military service, like every Korean will have to. And I think currently is in his final year. Uh, of StarCraft 2 professional play, at least until military server. It is, of course, possible he comes back after. Nonetheless, one of the uh, top Zerg players currently, often rated as a uh, at least a top three player, sometimes as the second best Zerg player currently, with Serral being the, uh, well, the clear number one in the minds of most people, except perhaps certain dark sims. As we're going to have a uh, Stargate opener coming out of Classic. Now, whenever we watch Classic games... I'd like to note that Classic is a player that A, is capable of playing a lot of different things, and B, is capable of playing very standard as well. He has a very a, a very large toolkit of, of builds and styles that he can pull out at a, a moment's notice, really. One of the things that I think is universal across Classics openers is that he has a very strong reliance or a strong tendency towards denying scouting. And we're seeing that here immediately as well with the Stalker as the second unit, the Oracle being chronoed out, I guess to be rallied to this area of the, uh, the pillar. That means that this Overlord is going to fall. In a way, I would have loved for Classic not to show this Stalker until the Oracle pops out. Because in that way, you can you can kind of surprise the opponent's Overlord. You might be capable of supply blocking your opponent for a little bit longer. Now, links are being uh, streamed across the map. This is going to be an Adept into Stalker, by the way. Ooh, this no third unit here. That is kind of risky, as this Stalker now under some heavy fire as well. Dark is not going to save... No, he is going to save his Overlord, and he's going to get the Stalker kill. And on top of that, force the Oracle to stay at home. So, classic here being maybe a bit too obvious in his desire to to stop the scouting and as a result in being as secretive as possible now is in a pretty bad spot this is not a good opener here cancel on the nexus that's minus 100 cancel on the pylon that means he's probably going to be supply blocked for at least a, a second here actually not the case as these pylons are going to finish in time but that third base is going to be late these gases are late these oracles are not harassing the spores are being built but they sh didn't really have to be built right now because these oracles don't really pose a, a serious threat to the drone line of dark currently four overlords on the way is of course a sloppy macro out of dark that is one thing we can say doesn't have a lot of money in the bank does have a couple of larvae ready to be sent but because he built too many overlords all at once cannot actually uh, spend those larvae currently which is just a little bit sloppy uh, pulls away the drones doesn't really lose anything is there a third oracle on the way um, yes, there is. The third oracle is done already. And we're going to see a forge plus robo plus nothing. That's actually just going to be it out of classic here. So forge plus robo coming out. No twilight council quite yet. This is something I've seen out of him. We've seen him play really a, a, a lot of these. I'm not even quite sure how to how to explain it. It's like robo focused builds, but sometimes with no focus on robo units. So make it make sense because i can't personally he's gonna get an observer out quickly that's something doesn't really provide a whole lot of pressure on the map this row bay however might provide that pressure on the map. just a little bit later he's gonna finish this five adept shade he's uh that will need to be recalled back home because they have no future here no extra links really being produced except for these four that already were in production 64 workers to 57 extra gas is coming out of classic as well classic playing a uh relatively passive game here for the next minute and a half two minutes i don't really think dark has anything to worry that means that if dark had had a slightly quicker fort base here he could just be going up to 82 workers right away like building any amount of units at this point for dark is actually a mistake because he doesn't need them unless his intention is to all in but i don't think it is you see a uh, an infestation pit coming out here as well more roaches being popped like, if you scout this and you're dark, you see thermal lens being researched. You know that there's Colossus on the way. There's no way that a Protoss is going to attack before thermal lens is done. So, 
yeah, now we're seeing that uh, these these uh, these drones being constructed. But we already built a bunch of units that are practically useless. Cree spread can start to flourish as well, of course, because there's not going to be any serious pressure on the map. There's no blink. There's no charge. Uh, there's no twilight upgrades, really. And that means that I, I would have loved to see Dark just kind of take a fifth instantly. 82, 84, 85 workers into 8 gas instantly as well. So we see him actually kind of rolling into this Hydra then. And that probably also means a Lurker then. It's what I can only imagine. I, it's very rare to see someone go Roach Hydra Hive. That's a very old school style of playing. As um, we do have this Oracle now coming around trying to get some scouting information. And it's going to move over, see these extra gases. And you can get a lot of information from gas count often. I think that's something that Dark also probably wants to, you know, wants to be doing. Is uh, getting stuff with those gases. And for the toss, what's really important is to figure out what units are actually being built. So if you see the hive, you see no spire, you know, okay, this is 90% of the time <laughs> not, not, going to be, uh, not, not going to be a muta, right? You see a bunch of roaches, maybe some hydras being produced. You see the hive, the lurker then, the hydra then. All of these are big indicators that it's not muta. Because that's really the only thing that's very scary if you're fighting against ATS is that it might be muta. Because you really need a very specific response to that. And right now we're not seeing that response. We're seeing no batteries, no cannons. Uh, we do have carriers on the way already because it's a quick rush here into those air, air units. The air weapons upgrade as well. It feels to me like Dark is just completely unaware of that. Also still on a low worker count, by the way. I really can't stress enough how low his worker count is right now. Only 74. He's created a bunch of buildings. He's trying to go up to 10 gas. But really, he he had until 8 minutes and 30 seconds. And he was aware of that since minute 6. To basically optimize his, his build un, up until that point. And he went for 76 workers total. That is not a good amount of workers. I think he definitely needed more. One of the reasons why you probably want more is so you can gather more minerals quicker. And then as you start moving out with some type of lurker push is that you have a couple of spines at these bases. So you could say, hey, he doesn't want to go up to 85 or 90 workers simply because he doesn't. He wants his max out to be stronger, but you can still have that strong max out by just adding some spines in. Then the drones, you know, they'll lose their supply because they turn into buildings and you're safe against potential run buys spine crawler positionings here are fairly suboptimal much prefer having them in locations where they're either saved by mineral patches or buildings or by walls or in a mineral line where a hold position on drones can actually help them quite a bit here they're fairly exposed and that does carry a bit of a risk as these links now moving towards the far left side you have an overseer moving towards the main don't forget there's a nidus network don't forget, where's that Nidus? Oh, it's down here. Nidus Network down here. Um, so we're probably going to be seeing a Nidus heading in towards the main base. But with the carriers ready already, like they're out. They have plus one. You can just send the carriers over into the main. And let's face it, the Hydra count here is simply not big enough. If you have, if all your anti-air consists of five Hydras and you're fighting against four carriers, that is usually not a very good sign. It really isn't. And is there anything in here? No, this is a fake knight as the real attack is coming out over here. As we have more Hydras now hitting the field. Link run by towards the right side. Don't forget these links have no upgrades, no adrenal either, which means they really just suck. Uh, they die against anything that can shoot. Another knight is now going down. There's uh, still no units in there. We also see no serious response out of Classic. As these carriers are going to clear this army eventually because there's just not enough anti-air. I'm not even sure if you need to send your main army over. Like these carriers will just clear it eventually. Yes, you might lose some units, but it's just going to die. And I love that Classic is staying on a simple kind of 8 gas uh, setup over here. Just a very simple 8 gas setup. Doesn't really want to do anything too crazy. Doesn't want to take a 5th base yet. Spread himself too thin. Ooh, dark. Ah, it's gonna get caught here by a stasis trap. Can you see units that are stasis underground? No, you can't. That is really awkward. Can you revelate them? I guess not. I, okay, now he does see them with this observer. Or maybe there is a revelation on it. I'm not sure how that works. Never really thought of these interactions of having a burrowed stasis burger. And now I think one of the key things that a classic really needs to do is trying to go into a into a double spy or double spire a double cybernetic score uh, setup more upgrades for these carriers i think that's going to be very important and 
Ooh, what are we seeing here out of dark? That's kind of cool. So we see a spire. So the potential for corruptors and potential for corruptor upgrades as well, of course, to deal with these carriers. But we also see an ultra cavern. We're seeing uh, adrenal glands, pneumatized, pneumatized carapace. So there's a lot of upgrades here happening. And this leaves a lot of options on the table for dark, which is always important to keep in mind. Is that as a Zerg player, you need to be very reactive. To what your opponent is doing i love this as a fifth base position by the way too often do we see tosses expand towards the left i really much prefer expanding towards this right side i think that is definitely the correct approach here that we see uh that we see classic take it a beautiful fifth base well defended for it as well just loads of cannons kind of setting up uh, very patiently very defensively and what can dark really do right now he's just sitting back he's relaxing he's chilling Trying to get a Nidus network up into one of these bases. Investors being popped out as well. So we have the uh, chitinous plating being researched. Just more upgrades on that spire as well. Second spire now also on the way. To increase the speed of the upgrades. We're at 11 gases total right now. It feels like we're already far and deep into a late game. Well, in reality, we're really just kind of recently... I think we're only 13 minutes in the game. The lurkers do pop out of this night. It's a cute one. That is, 10 workers going down. And perhaps the worst case would be the cybernetics work falling. Because that's the plus 2 upgrade. It's actually really big. Carriers are good. But they're much better if they have more damage output, obviously. And attack upgrades work really well on carriers. Now, it's going to try and target down this Nidus, which I love. Dark realizes needs to get in. Needs to click to get in. He absolutely blunders over here. Like, this is just a huge, huge mistake out of Dark, who forgot to right-click on top of the Nidus. As a result, loses 10 Lurkers for free. It's going to rebuild 7 Lurkers, as well as start uh, mixing in some of these Corruptors. Has the Investors ready? Not with Neural quite yet. So he continues upgrading into Melee. We get a Baneling Speed. We get a second Baneling Nest as well. I'm not sure why it's over here. Is this like a Virtue Signaling out of Dark? <laughs> Look, I'm building Banelings. <laughs> I'm cool like that. It's like, what is this? We know you have Banelings already, buddy. We can see the centrifugal hooks. But all right. You do you, buddy. You do you. Lurker defense. As, um, what you want to really want to do is get rid of as many Hydras as you can while you're kind of tacking into a, a real late game army. And the real late game army most likely is going to consist of uh, having you know, some Ultras in there, uh, a couple of Corruptors at least, a bunch of Spores as well being uh, sprawled around. Robo now being popped for a classic. This is a large, large carrier force. Almost feel like you can just fly in here and have start having a blast. No, doesn't really feel like there's a whole lot that Dark can do against that. As uh, the carrier count is it's just too high, almost. That's what it feels like. We have 12 carriers. Microbial shrouds are being used, though. Microbial doesn't work on buildings, by the way, so you can just target down spores and be kind of fine, honestly. Corruptors now coming out of their shell start hitting. Don't forget that the upgrades here on the air units for the Protoss player aren't actually that great. And a bunch of carriers there went down. This was not a great fight. Honestly, if these 12 lurkers hadn't fallen for free, I'd say that Dark is in a very winning position. But because of that, that big lurker loss, his resources lost is, is higher than it should be. Ooh, this is a, a ballsy play that I don't really like. It's a ballsy play that I don't really like at all. Five more Corruptors here on the way. <clears throat> and I have to wait and see what the plans are going to be. Spore Crawler Wall is uh, being constructed or reconstructed. Bailing Nest still standing strong. I think, honestly, it's time to, to get some ground units in here. Some links, maybe some Ultras. This base is extremely exposed. And that's where all of the production is currently. Also, oh, also seems like Classic uh, is currently just kind of giving up on the thought of ever defending his main. Like, he's sending a single carrier over, but this is not a serious defensive response, right? This is not a serious defensive response. You can just send these Corruptors over to deal with that as well. Like, that group of Corruptors can just clear that carrier, and in general the, the, the production in the main is so freaking vulnerable. Like, I can't stress that enough. The carrier is going to get recalled towards the right side. This mothership will need to be cancelled. It's going to pop out in two seconds. And it's just going to instantly die if uh, Dark is paying attention. Of course, Dark is paying attention. 
Is Dark always is paying attention. He's gonna fly through a time warp, which is a non-ideal uh, movement here, that's for sure. Corruptors at 1-1 one, one upgrades. Lurker borrowed over here. Starting to take out some of these Templar. One Templar will fall. No attack on the other side at the same time, though. It's almost disappointing. If you see the entire carrier army here, it feels like this massive Lurker force had some serious some serious potential. I mean, that's 16 Lurkers. That, that ain't no joke. That ain't no joke, my dear friends. It ain't no joke. Temp is now being added into the mix as well. So here come the uh, Lurkers. They move forward and start taking out a base. This is an odd attack here coming out of the Zerg player, but so far it seems to be working. Snipes one, will snipe a second, maybe even go for that Tempest. No, next Tempest that just popped out is going to get taken out. One shot by these bad boys. One Colossus almost falls as well. One Colossus will fall as the Lurkers take out this base. Dark with some phenomenal gameplay here against Classic will fly over not just the Archon, but also a bunch of Stalkers. Blink is not here, and that is going to save some of them Corruptors. The Lurkers taking out this base is a big deal. 16 Lurkers. Don't forget we have the ability to remax on any army we want right now with plus 3 carapace upgrades, plus 2 melee, chitinous plating, as well as anabolic synthesis, 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 synthesis. The quick movement of speed that the uh, Ultras can uh, can get. The only, yeah, the, the, the final thing missing really was this Neural Parasite, which is now being... Uh, upgraded here on the infestation pit and everything else is just you know the dotting the i's and slashing the t's that's really all there is to it banelings are gonna take out a bunch of these cannons and it feels like dark has now created a setup where every base on the left side is fairly vulnerable to run bys or minor attacks just really to anything we're gonna see a knight is in the main base these oracles can deal with that of course but you'll need to use some energy for that as well as some attention do we even have any units in this knight now once again it's a fake knight as uh, oracle plus carrier will move on over dark sees that and it's like hey wait a second maybe i can do something with these corruptors now flies into this army and probably isn't too happy with that link bane army on the other side is going to try and deny some of these cannons here Mothership is out. That's the second Mothership that has been built. The third. Wait, two have gone down already. I didn't even notice uh, the first one going down. I saw the second one go down for sure, but not this one. Big bailing run by here coming into this base. This is some phenomenal late game play out of uh, Dark, by the way. Can I just say that? After that Lurker loss, I really thought he was in a bad spot. But look at that resources lost. He's still way up. Just gonna burst his bubble. Lurkers now moving in as well, and uh, Nidus Network. This is so beautiful as the as the escape, as the uh, the way to defend the left side while attacking the right. He throws up the Nidus. Half of the Lurkers, by the way, not attacking, which is actually quite sloppy. He's gonna move back, just walking, um, which is probably somewhat understandable. Here comes some fungals. That's one. That's a pretty big one as well. A couple more where that came from. He's gonna miss this. Honestly, Dark is playing insanely well. I'm very impressed by his abilities. We have the ability to, to Microbial Shroud here as well, of course. No Spore Wall on this side of the map, though. And that could that could become kind of painful at the same time. We still have this push in forward with these Lurkers. But a couple of links in there as well. I'd love to see just one or two Ultras to easily burst these Cannon Walls. I think that would be fantastic. Uh, either way, it, it feels to me that... Yes... Classic just killed, what, two bases? And that's, you know, great and fun. And I'm sure he's going to be real proud. But Classic also doesn't really have any mining left. He doesn't have any probes left. His army is is good. But at the same time, it isn't even fully upgraded. Like, these carriers have two on upgrades. Classic too afraid to continue it. Or maybe he doesn't have the cyber course. Does have the cyber course. Just doesn't want to start any new upgrades. He needs to not just win a battle, but he needs to crush a battle. Army value currently is, well, fairly close. But Dark has an entire... Well, basically, 60% of this army can be rebuilt, while about 2% of this army can be rebuilt. So it's not a very fair fight when you look at it like that. These Lurkers are kind of out of position in a really awkward spot, out in the open, no spores, no infestors nearby. So Lurkers will retreat. At the same time, though, Link's attacking the far left, and this is exactly what we're looking for, is these massive assaults here on the left side, uh, which is really the only mining base as this gold hasn't mined in quite a while. And the moment Classic is forced into spreading himself somewhat, you know, thinly, 
Dark immediately strikes. Dark immediately strikes. 10, 11 workers going down. It's the single Ling is once again going to unburrow. Take out one more worker. You have another Ling run by coming in there. And this is just minerals that you're using to kill potential gas mining out of your opponent. So that's just going to be great all around. At the same time, we have to move forward here with these Corruptor, with these Vipers. Still have the Investors trying to hold the Watchtower. This is such a large army, though, that I understand that Dark is why Dark is scared. And it... This, this game is by no means over because the army the army supply of classic is very good on top of that dark hasn't mined any of his opponent's minerals or gas yet so technically a pure split map scenario is still completely possible and that's often the case on this map as we have an attack here into the carriers takes out two carriers and flies away that felt like a very risky move and that dark executes it well at the same time links coming in here on the left side such phenomenal play out of dark really just Crazy good play. This mothership is going to get caught. Do we have some energy on the Vipers? I think the answer might just be no. Uh, they're uh, gathering some of that energy right now. Back at the hatchery. Link's running in. We'll take out perhaps some of the production in the main as well. And what Classic wants is just a just a massive win here. Just a, a massive fat W as a carrier is going to get picked off. Going to be sent into its own demise into these corruptors corruptor count is phenomenal right now by the way 38 39 you have nine lurkers here which are gonna start setting up blinding clouds will need to be used if you actually want to win this fight a viable play almost feels like just clearing the ground here for classic keeping the archons alive to deal with the corruptors would be such a huge thing uh, if the tempest actually mow down some of these lurkers that would be phenomenal uh, rather than trying to focus too much on the air units i actually think that would be better here much much better mining still massively in favor of dark as he has entered his opponent's main base as well needs to be careful that he doesn't lose his tech my apologies for that for observing on my end and yeah it, it seems like classic actually is just going to be uh, taking out some of these lurkers which is completely the correct call here completely the correct call um i almost feel like that maybe ultras could be uh, somewhat of a solution here is the immortal count is only three but waiting for Ultras takes a long time. Like these guys, they built for a very, very long time. Corruptor's now trying to fly in. They're not really split. Baits a storm or two. Lurk account still fairly low. Overseers sacrificing their life for the swarm. At the same time, we're basically fully base trading here with these links. Ultra has made its way across the map. So there's at least one Ultra out. That's great. Spore crawlers probably should be going up at the same time as well. As uh, there's still enough cash in the bank for Classic to... Uh, rebuild these interceptors at some point there is a chance that that's going to run out as well archon gets taken out by lurkers that's a big deal eight more banelings coming in as well carriers or corrupts coming in from the side we'll take out one carrier we'll take out this mothership most likely what are they actually aiming at i feel like everything at the same time but it is working out so it doesn't really matter 12 more hydras popping out of this base soon are there more larvae available eight more so i'd say get a couple of ultras here as well 14 banelings being researched uh, are being morphed in a couple of queens coming out as well we don't actually have ultras being produced i just don't know why but it ain't happening we don't have any uh, any larva available or hardly any larva freaking five larva total that's so little uh 17 broodlords now being sent okay yeah that's that is such a clear ending of the game here um I mean, once classic sees even three broodlords he should know that this game is uber over lurkers in the back also just holding this base Classic, of course, hoping that his opponent has no cash available. And that is the opposite of the truth here. Let's look at this. This, is, this was such a great late game by Dark. Honestly, so, so well played. I'm very impressed by his abilities. Classic taps out and Dark takes the lead here on Elcioni. There we go, game number two. Dark versus Classic Oceanborn. Man, I'm still impressed by the way Dark played that out. It's really not easy to go from... A somewhat failed mid-game lurker uh, timing into a, a successful late game. I, I think I think it's very difficult. Also, let's not forget that Dark was pretty much in the dark the entire game. He didn't. It didn't feel like he knew much about the carriers. Like he attacked a lurker push with five hydras into freaking four carriers with plus one that were done already. That's not a great start. Then losing that Nidus with the ten lurkers for free. That also was not a great start. And then the movement after that was just so good. On a map that is difficult. Impressive stuff. Let's see if Classic this time is going to get his uh, third base up instantly. 
I do wonder, I do wonder. Look at this. This is the, this is the dance. You don't want to activate the pulsar beam. And you want to get the nexus up. And he gets it. Good start here for, uh, for Classic. As he has that Oracle was forced into staying at home by this Ling, uh, this little Ling flood. These 12 Lings that have been constructed. But, but, it doesn't matter. Because he gets the Nexus up. He's now going to go with two Oracles across the map. Double Gas is coming down as well. We're going to have to see what Classic's plans are going to be. What are you planning here, buddy? Are we going to see another one of these Forge Robo builds? Or a more standard Twilight approach here? That's really the, the standard currently. Ooh, diving very deep with that one Oracle. Taking quite a bit of damage on it. No tech yet. We're seeing nothing. Okay, it's going to be a robot once more. In vision, by the way. Uh, Link could push into this gateway and scout that robotics facility. A little bit sloppy. Especially because I usually give uh, Classic a lot of credit. Is he just going to rinse and repeat what he did before? It is possible. Uncharacteristic move. Because Classic usually comes to a best of three with three different build orders. Actually, rumor on the street is usually Classic comes with four in case one of the games is a draw. It's never happened to him yet, but he's prepared, all right? <laughs> he has two builds for every single map, just in case. <laughs> three draws in a row, like, nah, I'm ready for that. <laughs> I got builds everywhere, buddy. It's good damage with these uh, oracles, though. Eight kills total. 52 to uh, 55 to 50, well, actually, never mind. I'm not sure why I'm live casting the worker count here, but it's 54 to 54. <laughs> uh, it's not great for the Zerg. Zerg wants to be up at this point in the worker count as uh, Dark once again runs into a supply block. It's a Dark classic, sloppy early games, mediocre mid-game timings, and then a late game that uh, is insane. Like, that is that is really dark in a nutshell. So we actually have a, a pretty much a, a straight up repeat from what happened in game number one. The question that I have now is are we going to see a Stargate transition once more or will Classic change it up? Will Classic say, hey, you know what? That fleet beacon, second Stargate, yeah, that has some risk in there. That's it's, you know, it's not super safe. I don't want to do that once more. Dark, however, also switching it up. Oh, you can't make this up. Did this get scouted? That was really close. That revelation almost revealed the spire. Almost second Stargate plus fleet beacon. I mean, this is really powerful against spire, obviously, because you're gonna have well, a second Stargate and fleet beacon. So. Easy access here to uh, any Impulse Crystals, which is the range upgrade for the Phoenix, as well as a very quick Phoenix production. Dark is gonna scout it. No, he's not. No, he's not. He just barely misses it. Like, what is that? An, an inch? Oh. And if he throws out freaking 12, 13 Muras here, and there's gonna be phoenixes ready. That's not a good look. That is not a good look. Look at that. Like, this is so suspicious here. If you're seeing larva like this, can you stasis larva? Again, should you be capable of stasising larva? That's what I want to know. They can't can turn these into units. That would be cool. That would be real cool. I appreciate that. Oh, he cancels. Because he sees the carrier production, instantly gets corruptors out instead. He started 12 mutas or so, or 10 Muras, and cancels them, instantly starts Corruptors. That's a testament to his solid injects here, by the way. Because that means you have a lot of larva available. If you cancel a unit as a Zerg, you don't get the larva back. You get the money back, not the larva. 12 Corruptors coming out here. We don't have Blink on the way. This is gonna come as a, as a clean surprise here. 10 gas as well, straight up for Dark. Dark knows he's not in danger of dying. Once again, low worker count. I I really feel like if Dark would just slightly clean up his, his first six minutes, he'd be practically unbeatable. Because he's making things happen from positions, which is fairly difficult. Now the Corruptor's flying in. Uh, stalker count is relatively high. Buff! First Corruptor gets sniped. Charge finishes up, and the natural follow-up here is obviously going to be Blink. Like that, that just makes sense to me. If he doesn't instantly start Blink, I, I'd be shocked, almost. It is actually going to be Muta behind this. He's going to play pure Corruptor Muta into a guy that has double Stargate, 10 Stalkers, and 8 Gas Mining. Dark is going to go to 12 Gas, though. Look at his Gas Income. That's going to that's gonna spike even further. 
I need it. Second to the cyber car. I think Classic is slightly misreading this. Classic probably believes that the follow-up is going to be a proper late game. Vipers, that type of stuff. So that's what, where Classic's mind is at. But at the same time, he is playing safe, getting cannons in mineral lines, has batteries here. I just don't really see what these Muras can do. I mean, it's 13 Muras, 8 more on the way. That's 21. 21 Muras, 11 Corruptors. We now have Phoenixes being produced. He must, he must have scouted these Muras then. It's the only thing that makes any sense. You see the army moving over towards the left. And carriers just destroy Muras. They rip him apart. Really, they do. If they get close enough, that is, of course. A couple of workers will go down. Corruptors now running in here. Loads of cannons being added into the natural as well. Eight workers have fallen. How many Muras have gone down? Two. Good trade here for Dark. The problem is, is that he doesn't need good trades. He needs to kind of win the game. Because he's on a massive timer. Like, just a massive timer. Because what happens if Classic maxes out on four Archons, Carrier Phoenix, and the game ends. That's what happens, let me tell you. That is what happens. This is a wild attack here coming out of Dark. I don't think this is viable, is it? How did he kill? A Carrier and a Phoenix. He lost two Corruptors and six Muras. Not a great trade. We have a third Stargate. Yeah, we do. That's a good call. I'd love to see more upgrades for these air units. And this is one of the times where I wouldn't mind seeing a fifth base either. Because gas count is so important. And also, there's really no space for very high Ling counts or something like that. Or like a Ling Roach. There's got to be space for maybe some Lings and some Bane Lings. But not for a bunch of Roaches there. So Archons defend basically everything here. Uh, army splitting becomes somewhat, somewhat easy. Revelations are good, of course. As the Phoenix count is at 8. Archon count is at 3. Carrier count at 3 as well. 29 Banelings now being produced. Uh, losing Oracle sucks. That's not good. Another uh, Mura does get taken out. I still believe that uh, Blink would be very useful to have. Just being capable of blinking forward and sniping a Corruptor every now and again is freaking huge. Ooh. Dark is gonna go for a journey into the main base. That is a risky journey. Courageous man. Or perhaps an idiotic move. As it feels to me that these Corruptors are not in big enough numbers. If the Corruptors fall, it means that the Mudas fall. Because the Corruptors are the last defense, really. Oh, here we go. Attack onto the carriers. Super battery, are you available? The answer is no. Not available. This was a god-awful fight, though, for Dark. God-awful fight for Dark. Kills 13 workers. Will lose his entire air presence. His entire air presence. Has killed two extra carriers. But at this point, I'd say... If you're classic, you add in two more carriers, push across the map, and we're ready to win the game pretty much. Or even without the two extra carriers. I mean, we have such a air dominance. There's a decently sized ground army. Does need to be careful for banelings, of course. There is a lot of banes. There's no storm either. Also two colossus, though. Yeah, pish posh. It's all gonna be on creep. This is gonna be a tricky fight. Do we have force fields? We have... Oh my god, the perfect force fields! These were actually the perfect force fields. Phoenix is now coming in, moving forward as well. Colossus in the back with their plus two attack, dishing out a lot of damage. Ultra Cavern not quite done yet. Target fire on the prism is good. That means it will fall. Phoenixes will lift all of the queens. There's no more Banes available as Dark seemingly pushes this back. And uh, with 50 more Lynx and four more Roaches, a couple more Corruptors as well, Dark is... Well, well actually... Close in supply still. Carriers has reinforcements. It's going to take a while. Still has that fifth base, just isn't really mining from it. It's going to take out this base. Still has the air control, of course. Is it viable to take out this base? Send some phoenixes over here, kill that, and then hope that life's okay. And the two colossus definitely pack a punch. We have chitinous plating on the way. It's a lot of ravagers here, though. That's what I'm worried about. And vipers are going to be fantastic. Feels like these phoenixes need to start doing some harassment work here. Five more uh, probes on the way. I mean, you get you get two waves of five probes. All of a sudden, you're at like 72, 73 workers. It's going to be great. Yeah, I got to get some lifts here. This is important. This is really important. Corruptor count is simply not high enough. That means that they're going to fall. So a lot of these ravagers are going to fall as well. With plus one against uh, one carapace upgrades. Phoenixes do a lot of damage. It is what it is. 
Corruptors here. Falling order upgrades on the Corruptors. Plus two. No armor upgrade. But Phoenix is still going to be having a blast. Because there's just so freaking many. Eight Phoenixes. And all these Corruptors are not really uh, joined up together. They're uh, coming out one by one. I wonder if Ravagers is better to kill here than, uh, than going for drones. Probably. Right? And Ravagers is way more expensive. <laughs> How many did he kill here? I think he killed like seven or eight already. Like he's almost running out of energy right now. Could start going for Overlords, honestly. Wouldn't mind that if he starts just hunting Overlords here. Kind of sick, actually. Also expensive, Overlord. It's not like there's that much cash for Dark. Classic has uh, built a couple of workers. Not that many, surprisingly so. Carrier count is large. Six, with two more on the way. It's going to bring the total up to eight. A couple of Immortals in the mix would help as well. Robo count is only at one, though. So that's going to be a slow, slow progress. Slow process, if he wants to do that. Cannons being thrown down. This base is somewhat secure. Doesn't really have walls, though. Still needs to be somewhat careful. The real issue here for Dark seems uh, glaringly obvious. And that's going to be the fact that he has 10 Corruptors against 7 Carriers and 7 Phoenixes. No serious Spellcasters, but what, a single Viper? No Infestors out, nothing. So, I think the only real solution that Dark has over here is the base trade. Whenever the opponent moves out, this base trade, lose some units, add more Corruptors in the mix. Maybe try and get um, a couple of Spores, but... It feels like Dark is going to be a bit late with that. He needs to send this army around as well. This army can try and defend. I don't think it's viable. This army just can't fight. It's just not viable. That's that's just a, a fact right now. It's an absolute fact. That's this parasitic bomb here being used. Corruptors need to be reinforcing this army. But uh, there's nothing being constructed right now. Ling Runby is going to take out the fort base. That is nice. As the Ultras will somewhat clean up the ground here. Actually, more than somewhat. Vipers also hitting with the Biles. That is a pretty big deal. Nine more Corruptors on the way as well. This base uh, is a lot of things, but Secure isn't one of them. It's going to recall the Colossus. Super Battery needs to activate if there is one. And there is. There we go. Zalot's got warped in as well. So I think this is going to get cleaned up. And if this gets cleaned up and Classic takes out one more base... It's just gonna be GG. There we go. Classic ties up the series one to one here on Oceanborn. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna lead us into game number three here on Site Delta. Where look at that pylon block on a third base. This is one of these things that has never been worth it, especially if there's another third base available. Dark just looks at the pylon and is like, "Oh no." Anyway, <laughs> it just takes the third base. <laughs> How horrible! Ooh, what's this probe doing? Oh, he probably forgot to send it back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was like, man, this is <laughs> this guy's going on an adventure. Yeah, it's not adventure time quite yet. It's an early freaking third base, huh? That ain't viable at all, son. Four links out total. It's gonna go heavy here on the drone count. Look at that. Would you look at that? Triple adapt into nothing. See what this Oracle can do. It flies into the main base. No. It stops moving. But what for? Is this done with life or is this in vision range? No, it's not. He's just hanging out. Dude, Dark must be pooping himself right now. He saw that Oracle go somewhere <laughs> into dead space. <laughs> in no clue where it is. Okay. The Oracle's now moving in. Three queens are there. So, Spore done in the net. Nice position on the Spore, buddy. <laughs> what are you defending here? <laughs> the left side of this lair? <laughs> it is not a good spot, yeah. Please. <laughs> Thank God. It is also not a good spot. I think that is blocking this patch quite a bit, isn't it? Jesus. It, okay. Is it... Can even, okay, I can still mine from this spot. For a second I thought it was completely blocked, but that's not the case. Robo Twilight. Double gate. Scout Denial with two Stalkers. The road Warren gets thrown down. This is a high gas count here of a relatively low worker count. I think this is going to be a straight up road shot in. No? Four gases before this is even saturated? That is that feels pretty crazy to me, huh? 
that feels pretty crazy. This is not a good a good build to play a Rochalin into though. What is this like? Eight gate blink? Seven gate blink? Like, classic is all in. So both players here with an all in. And the question now is going to be very simple, is who attacks first? Oh, it's not an all-in, it's a Spire. Now let me tell you, the Mura, quick Muras also aren't entirely great against Fast Blink. Fake Chrono here on this base, not doing anything. Uh, so one Oracle gets taken out, Spire does get spotted. In a way, this is bad for Classic, because Dark now sees that his Spire got spotted, and as a result will most likely not commit to the Spire. That would make the most sense to me. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to get your Spire scouted 20% in and then continue with Spire plans. But if Dark were to actually build like freaking 10, 12 Muras, that would be great here for a Classic. Classic's just defending this third right now. Has a pylon out on the map that isn't being spotted. Phoenix out that is not doing anything. I guess they're to deny any potential overseers. I think Dark is actually still going to play Mura. Look at his worker count. 64. He's playing not just Mura, but he's playing a Mura all-in. That doesn't even exist, and he's doing it. I love to see it. Eight gateway and two more pylons here as well. Love to see it. Fifth gas now gets thrown down. I mean, this feels very obvious to me as to what is kicking off. I'd be shocked if Dark builds any Muras at all at this point. He's getting upgrades for his unit. He's going to be fighting against a Blink Stalker 0 0 at army. Adding in a second Evo. Did he cancel the Spire? No, he let it finish. Of course, his gas income was way too high for, for way too long. So this feels super uncomfortable. Look how much gas that is. There could have been so many minerals. Dark could have legit been up like 25 30 supply had he not been wanting to rush Spire and Muras. But that's not what happened. If he loses the fort, that would actually suck. That would not be nice for him. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's not the beginning either. All right, it's it's just not great. It really ain't great. It almost has no units whatsoever. No kill there on that Ravager. It is 29 Stalkers to four Ravagers. 36 links, now 54 links and two Roaches. Plus one not done yet here for Dark, who's starting to lose Overlords as well. Very painful game so far for Dark. Just getting a bit unlucky, honestly, with the build orders. Getting a bit unlucky. I love this Ling run by. He's going to go and cancel a fort base. And then realize that there hasn't really been a fort base yet up until this point. This will probably force a recall or trigger a base trait. It's one of the two things. There's no in between here. It's going to be a base trait. In that case, these Ravagers should not be down here. What a blunder by Dark to move down the ramp into an open space when half the army is on the other side of the map, killing all the eco of your opponent. What a huge mistake here by Dark. Oracle's now coming in. Now that majority of the queens have fallen, Link's finally returned back. Oracle's still active. 110 supply against 92 army supply in favor of our Protoss player, who keeps his Nexus alive for now. Yes, will lose all of his probes. Yes, but he's going to be up. He's going to be up a base soon. What a huge mistake out of Dark. He had this game in the back. He absolutely had this game in the back. What an enormous blunder. He thought he could trick his opponent into not moving through this area. But all Dark needed to do was to keep this ramp. And if Classic ever commits into this space, you can just surround him. Eventually the links come back. This was... Oh my god. What a huge mistake. Blunder city here by Dark. The half of his army was on the other side. And the Ravagers are the vulnerable part of the army that deal a lot of damage, but they're also the vulnerable part. Now we're going to see Adrenal Glands. We see infest Infestors being added in. This is not necessarily over yet, just because of how good these upgrades might become. One of the main problems that Dark is facing is the complete lack of anti-air defense. Uh, no Queens. I guess he could build Corruptors to deal with this. Two Corruptors to deal with Oracles. Classic counter. We actually see a second Stargate being added in for, for Classic. Like zero Queens. There's zero Queens out right now. This is never, never seen before. First time this footage is being shown to anyone. Things will try to take these Stalkers out. 
I, I want adrenal finishes, by the way. You're gonna have what? Plus one adrenal glands links against pure stalkers. If you hit a fungal, whoo, let me tell you, keep the links alive, please. Keep the links alive. Keep the links alive. That's all I care about, buddy. Six more overlords on the way. These links are going to start attacking the battery. I can only imagine. No upgrade still here for classic. Probably should throw down a Templar archives, honestly. Oh, look at that. He's hunting. He's hunting. Oh, and he's getting some good results here with that hunt. Lost so many links here, Dark, that is. So many links going down. Oracle helping out against these fungal boys as well. As more Oracles now in production. Double Stargate Oracle production. I can't believe that the... That is such a wild call as well. Just adding in another Stargate to pump more Oracles. I actually think that Dark should just add like two Corruptors here. Two, three Corruptors just to keep his links alive against Oracles. Look at this fight. Look at this fight. Look at this fight. Fight, fight, fight. Can you fight that? He might be pushing it. I think he could actually, but he won't. Yeah, Stalker's now moving back. Forge on the way. Ah. Uh. It's going to be a cancel or a no cancel. Not sure if that was canceled, actually. Classic's going to continue blinking. Classic's going to continue... No, it's not going to continue blinking. Oracle count going up to six, soon eight. We have three queens against eight oracles. Is he just saving them up? Oh, he is. I mean, that's game. It's just game. Once they fly across the map, he's going to kill the spore. He's going to kill every unit that exists. He sees that there's no units here, like one queen. That's it. He's going to see that there's one queen. He wants to make sure that he's hiding them. Look how careful he is with that crap. Templar Arc is coming up behind this. 168 supply to 135. Dark is trying to stay in, but it's going to be impossible, I think. I think it's just simply impossible. I don't think he can. And here comes our man. Runs in forward. We get one fungal. And that's it. That is the one fungal we have. No, we have another one. Th those were the two fungals we had. Honestly, some, some pretty mediocre control so far on the oracles, but now can just target down the spore. And that means all of these uh, links or all of these drones will go down. And that means that Dark is now all in with an army that can't really attack into it. It, it can't attack into anything. You're not great here. You're just losing. 20 workers going down. I think Dark is dead. I think Dark knows he's dead. Oh no, what a sick ending of this series. What a... I can't believe the moves that Dark made here. I cannot believe it. What a fantastic first game by him and then ending it on such a, a huge mistake. Oh no. Just a, a positional error. A mistake in the decision making, which is the one thing that Dark usually doesn't do. We have Rumbys coming in in uh, multiple locations, but... This is fairly irrelevant. I mean, you're never going to fight these oracles, which is not possible. And also the fact that it's like 111 army supply to 60 isn't really helping very much. Good revelate here, yeah. That's it. That's absolutely it. Link's now baiting these bad boys away. That means that these links will actually get some kills. Dark is playing phenomenal. Like, Dark is so good with certain things. Link harass and burrowing being one of them. I'm going to get this base, actually. He's gonna get this base. Okay. There's only 18 workers. It's double the income. Is it still possible? Th the problem is just these air units. But we have Vipers now. We have Vipers out. I almost would love to see Neural Parasite being researched as well. Just for infest. If you can deal with the Archons, you have a fight. Uh oh, these links need to spread out. So they bait as many revelations as possible. That's indeed what he's doing. There's no Observer in this army. Never has been, never will. Dark can still do it. Well, can he? Realistically, no. What the hell are these Vipers doing? Well, dying is the, the easy answer. Link's now running in. Problem is that Oracles can always go back home, right? Stasis here is going to hit. Like a machine. The Nexus does fall, though. That's so funny. There's going to be no mining. Like, hardly... Like, this is it. He's mining from his main 15 minutes in. That's it. Like, two workers in his natural. Double. Like, oversaturating one patch. That's also funny to me. Plus three melee. That is crazy. 
honestly, Infestation Pit, if you can take over these Archons, you win. Yeah, I'm not sure if you win, actually. But your upgrades are so sick. That almost feels like you could. But against Archons, if you... Yeah. Parasitic Bombs here being added on top of these Oracles. I think that's just going to be it. That's just going to be it. Dark made this very close after making it very close by making a mistake. Uh, all the oracles do end up falling. Links get chased away by uh, well, the final oracle, so to say. I think that's going to be it. What a sad ending to this series for Dark. What a sad ending to this uh, GSL season for Dark. Good lord. This would, this would absolutely destroy me. This is just painful, isn't it? It's trying to stay in, but we know there's no point. Ah. He's, he's trying his best, though. He wants to go for the full-on base trade, I guess. GG. All right. That's it. Classic wins the series. Two to one score here. I just want to show that moment one more time. Just the... Uh, just the mistake that it was. Like the, the huge blunder. I think it's somewhere here, right? This feels correct. Okay, here it already has happened. It's like this is a stroke of genius. Like these run buys, these massive run buys against high stalker counts are brilliant. Where do we get it? Come on. Eight X. Here. This is obviously brilliant. Okay? Plus one's about to finish up. Here. So now you're forcing a situation. Where it basically, like I, I said it in the moment, I said, okay, now either you need to recall and accept that your push is over, like you're never going to be capable of moving out again, which is probably bad, or you have to, you basically, you go you go for the base trade. That's it. These are your two options you have. And here, Classic goes for the base trade. If you stay on the high ground here as Dark, you're basically gathering a lot of time. You don't want to lose your army until it is at maximum strength. And this base is going to fall very soon. You know that. These links can go over as well. So what you want to do is you just want to run away with your units, basically. You throw some biles maybe from the high ground and then you run away. You try to gather as many links as you want. You can lose a base. You can probably even lose two bases and be fine. Okay? As long as you... Because you have the upgrade lead, you're going to have a tech lead. There's no way he's going to kill your hive. If he does that, you'll be back in time. So what you want to do is just piss off. And instead, he makes his army the most vulnerable it can be. And his goal was for this to be a blink back. If this was a blink back, Dark wins. But Classic realized and blinks forward. And then Classic wins. At least wins this fight. He understood the situation very, very well. And Dark was, was hoping that, that Classic was afraid and would blink back. That's not at all what happened. And then here, these links come back too, too late. He still managed to eventually make a hold because of the power of the Ling. But yeah, it's crazy. What a crazy game this was. This was such a good game. Really, really sick. I loved it. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thanks, and bye-bye.